Okay, I probably don't need to tell you that Christian Derrissaw is good. You probably already know that if you've been following the Vikings, if you look up any stats or anything, but we can examine why he is good, what we can learn from it, and how to avoid learning the, lo- the wrong lessons from it. Welcome to the Lockdown Vikings podcast. You like that on three, one, two, three, you like it! You are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I am your host, your pal, and the kid you copied off in math class. My name is Luke Braun. You can find me on Twitter at Luke Braun NFL. The show is on Twitter at Locked On Vikings. You can also find this show on Amazon Fire or Roku. Just download the Lockdown Minnesota Sports app. And thank you so much for making Lockdown Vikings your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise, then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in game. Today on the show is going to be a Christian Derrissaw propaganda episode. So if you want to hear why the Vikings have one of the best tackles in the league, uh, and I'm not not a young rising tackle, not like I've heard like one of the best young guys in the league, you know, oh, one of these up and no, 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 no. Christian Derrissaw is an elite tackle, full stop, bar none, no qualifiers. He is one of those people that should get a market setting contract uh, when he is due for that. And if the Vikings don't have Christian Derrissaw in their organization for the next 10 years, something went wrong. I'm that high on the kid. Um, so here's why. <laughs> um, I think it's best to just kind of talk traits first, and then I'll talk a little bit more about what it means and like what it means to me as a guy who missed on the draft eval. I was not high enough on Christian Derrissaw. Uh, so I'll kind of re-examine some of that stuff as well. You can, you can go back and listen to, I don't think I was quite on YouTube yet, so you can't see it on YouTube. Uh, but you can go back and listen to the audio of my O-line pre-draft. It came out like the week before the draft. I did all the O-linemen and I wasn't big on Derrissaw. You can go find my cold takes, clip them out, tweet them at me, yell at me. It's fine. Um, so, I have been watching like all of Derrissaw's season, uh, rewatching it for a larger cut up big project of kind of been teasing. And, uh, the main thing that has jumped out to me is how consistent Derrissaw is. And I think that is probably the most important thing with offensive linemen, right? We have been this, this is like the, the Bradbury problem, right? That Bradbury has some really eye popping highlights sometimes, but a highlight win and an ugly win generate the same result. And, you know, a, you, you did everything right, but you lost, um, and a really ugly loss also kind of generate the same result. Aesthetics don't count for much when it comes to offensive linemen. And so you have to be consistent and that's the deal. And with Derrissaw, you get both anyways. Um, but you have to be able to consistently keep yourself, uh, out of bad situations, recover when you do get into bad situations and, and you know, leverage the skill sets and athleticisms that you have. And that is the thing with Derrissaw. If there are mistakes, sure, there are, everybody has them. They are very, very few and very, very far between. That's the thing that jumps out. And if you are going to try to evaluate Derrissaw by looking at it, I know his PFF grade is like third in the league or something like that. Um, I think he's got a really elite like pass block win rate and all this like statistically what the statistics we have for offensive linemen sort of bear this out with Derrissaw. Um, but they don't tell you what he does and how he keeps that up and how he keeps that up, I think is even more impressive and in a weird way, more sustainable because he can play the the whole thing on hard mode and still win. And that makes it really hard to, uh, to get his goat unless you're like specifically Micah Parsons, (laughs) like you have to be like that kind of caliber of guy. Um, which means, you know, as Derrissaw develops, those matchups are going to be must-see TV when they come up. Um, but he plays, like, different than 
tackles typically play. And that makes him kind of hard to figure out. And I think that is, that's like where I got lost when I was doing my draft eval of him. Um, there is stuff that he does that I think is strategic and more purposeful than I sort of understood. And that's, you know, what I've been able to learn from this. Um, but really, the, the, the defining feature of Christian Derisaw is that he mercilessly obliterates people. I mean, he does this three times a game. And again, like I'm, I'm pulling the clips too. Like I'm actually, I'm charting this in a weird way because I know how many clips I'm pulling. It is vi- more common to see him do this four times a game than one time a game, uh, where he will just take a guy and sometimes it's, you know, you got out into space and you kill the defensive back, which is always fun for an O lineman. That's food, right? But sometimes it's a three tech man. Like sometimes it's a big dude that weighs 325 pounds and wears number 92 that he's putting on his ass. Um, he gets his hands on you and it's it's heavy hands, right? And it's all arms too. And that is a, a, a matter of discipline that makes it really, really easy. If you compare that to say Ed Ingram, especially earlier in the season, where he would do that, that lungy thing. And, and Ingram was really bad about this in college. I think he's gotten better at it. But if you watch Ingram, he'll get, I think I heard somebody say like his, he'll get out in front of his skis a little bit, like his, his weight gets out in front of him. And if he can get his paws on you, then that means his whole weight is going to go into that punch and it's going to be a really, really, really nasty punch. But if you can evade it, you, you'll get swum. And Ingram gave up some sacks this, that way this year. With Derisaw, his weight doesn't need to go into that punch for him to obliterate you like that. It's all just arms. He's just bench press, pressing you with impact, and it's devastating. That is a really cool athleticism, and because he doesn't have to compromise his balance to do it, it's a lot harder to counter. It's just when he gets his hands on you, it's bad, not he's you know risking like getting swum or, or spun or, or whatever. Um, and the other thing about those punches is that their timing is genuinely incredible. And what you really see is when um, when when defensive linemen try to give him like, it's like a Euro step or like a skip step. It's like almost a hop. Uh, and it's sort of a setup to either uh, rip underneath or a swim or something like that. But you kind of, you almost jump. And it's just, a, it's a really quick hop. And I think it has to be a quick hop if you're a defensive lineman, because if you're in the air, you don't have a base and you're going to be really susceptible. Um, Darisaw's hands are quick enough to get you during that hop. And then you can't set up your kind of follow up move. That is, it's, it's very veteran. It's very like, it sort of shows an amount of experience that you wouldn't expect from a second year player. Like that's kind of a, an ahead of your years kind of thing. Um, but again, that is a repeatable skill. If you just time your punches, right, go too early, you get countered, go too late, you give everything up, you get, you know, you give up your chest and the defensive lineman gets to put his hands wherever he wants on you. Um, timing that at exactly, and, and it's not just like a matter of balance. Like it's not just kind of trying to put the slider in the right place. It's a matter of what is he coming at me with? What, like what move is he using? And when is that move? the most susceptible to my heavy hands. And he counters a lot of pass rushes that way. Like I I think just by timing it right and getting his hands on you, on you in the right place at the right time, that is kind of the reason he wins the rep like a solid third of the time. Like that will get you so many wins by just being technically disciplined in that way. Um, I am not even close to done. There's so much more with Derisaw that I, I want to just gush about. All right. This thing is going to get you the meat sweats by the end of it. Um, but first it is the off season and that means it's time to start talking draft and free agency and trades and all that stuff. And if you want to play a little armchair GM, how about Ultimate Football GM? It's my new favorite phone game. Uh, the, per- the the perfect kind of mess with it while you're just waiting for something or just on the couch or whatever. It is a simulator of exactly that. You 
have to hire the right coaches. You have to draft the right players. You have to negotiate contracts. You have to make a good roster and try to get it under a salary cap and all of that stuff. And I know how much you guys are obsessed with it. I know how, because of the questions that I'll be that I'll get all off season about what do we do at the cap? Should we draft a corner or a wide receiver? That's going to be a big debate. All of this stuff. Uh, try your own hand at it and head on over to Ultimate Dash Football or ultimate-gm.com to get Ultimate Football GM or just look up Ultimate Football GM on the app store. And what's cool, we've actually created a Locked On League for you to compete against other Locked On listeners, both Vikings and elsewhere in Locked On. Uh, Just choose the Locked On League, it's all one word, in the app to join. And maybe you can create a football dynasty. And Locked On Vikings listeners get a 100% free boost to the franchise when using promo code Locked On in all caps in the game store. That's Locked On in all caps, so check it out today. Ultimate Football GM, start your dynasty today. Thank you much for making Locked On Vikings your first listen of the day. For your second listen, check out Locked On NFL, where they're talking a little Sean Payton, talking a little Eagles Niners, and uh, we're going to start getting into preview stuff over there, so go check that out. Um... Let me continue on with Derisaw, and there's just other traits and stuff that I just want to start talking about and explaining. Um, maybe the next, like after the the devastating punches, maybe the next most distinctive trait in my mind about him is the anchor. Um, I can't count how many times uh, that Derisaw has taken a speed to power without the pad level and just eaten it and not even had to hop or anything. It's really funny. <laughs> like it's genuinely humorous to watch very strong men just break, just like stop on him, uh, like like he's an immovable force. It is one of those just like raw athleticism things that is fairly rare. Uh, like if you look at Brian O'Neill, good tackle, right? made a Pro Bowl, right, uh, and deserved to. Every once in a while, he'll get hit by that, and he'll have to hop step and anchor. And, and and he will, and it'll count as a win, and that's part of what makes him good. But Derisaw doesn't even have to bother with that. I, I've seen him have to hop step like a couple of times. Like it is so rare for him to actually lose the power battle that much, even if the defensive lineman gets pressure or uh, gets leverage, gets the right relationship to him. If you're trying to go straight through Christian Derisaw, you are. Uh, I, you, you're not smart. <laughs> it's not the way you should do it. And that is like, if you're watching tape on Derisaw, that, that would be the last thing I'd be trying to get around him every time. It's just incredible. Like it's just an athleticism thing. It's really cool. Um, but that is, uh, do, do not mistake that for anything about, I mean, he is a very mobile guy for how big he is. He's, I mean, he's mobile for a tackle in general, right? He's just a mobile offensive tackle, which is more impressive to think about when you consider how big and strong he is, right? Um, he can move. You can see it in the run game too. When, when he's tasked with reach blocking, he can do it. Um, when he is the front side tackle, the play side tackle in, uh, the Viking zone run more, uh, more often than not. Yeah. That is, that job is sort of a pick your path kind of job where, you know, your job is to block this guy, usually defensive end who's out there as like a set as like a five tech or a nine tech, um, and you can either try to reach block him and that's preferable if you can get there cause it's outside zone and we want to sort of seal him off from the outside so that Dalvin cook can get around him or whoever's running it. Uh, but if you can't get the reach block, just get into him, just pick him up and drive him. Right. Um, just blast off on the guy and Dara saw, I got like 80% of the time he just blasts off on the guy. He'll just say like, you know, he, he won't get the reach and he'll just go take him. And with zone zone is perfectly set up for that to be a perfect, like a very viable option. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and so you'll see a lot of the mid zone runs will actually go up that B gap. Well, between Derisaw and Cleveland. And that's where some of the most successful runs came, uh, I think. And like, honestly, I think he could make more reaches if he tried them. But why would you argue? Because he's just blasting off on guys and, and, you know, pushing them into the next dimension. Um, And the the holes that some of these B gaps have had to run into, especially when there's a B gap bubble. I talked about that a ton leading up to the playoff game. uh, If you want more detail on what what I mean by that. Um, But the the size of these holes is utterly incredible. 
And if he's ever tasked with getting into the second level, a screen, climbing up or whatever, you see that mobility. So the mobility is absolutely there. Um, but in situations where it doesn't matter, like a speed to power, which is kind of, or a bull, or just a straight up bull rush where they're trying to get through you, you can see that like, oh, wow, that's just playing right into his teeth. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. And with mobility, this is sort of one of the things I learned. Um, when I was scouting him, you know, a couple years ago, I kind of noticed a lot of the time if somebody was trying to do a speed rush and just get up and around him and turn the corner, they could do it. And it would be up to the quarterback to step up into the pocket. And what I wasn't really aware of enough was what the quarterback's actual launch point was and how Christian Derrissaw uses that launch point to his own advantage. There is an advantage that the offensive lineman has on the defensive lineman, which is if I'm the O-line, I know where the quarterback is. I know where he's supposed to drop on this given play, right? If I've studied the playbook enough, I know that this is a seven-step drop, so he's so I got eight yards to work with or whatever it is. Um, the defensive lineman does not know that. He doesn't know if he turns the corner at 10 yards, will he be past it or won't he? Or Well, 10 yards, he'd be past it. So if you turn the corner at eight yards, you know, will you be past it or do you have to try to cut back inside or you know, what are you going to do? And Derisaw uses this. What I saw in college a lot was that he wouldn't get a lot of depth when he would like kick slide. Um, and it looked like guys were getting around him. But if you look at it, he always gets enough depth to force the, the edge rusher. If you're going to speed rush, you have to speed rush too high or at least, and he kind of relies on this ability. He has a phenomenal ability to get his hips turned upfield and drive you upfield. Um, so if you, you know, if the launch point is eight yards, he will defend seven yards of it. And if you get on that eighth yard, all I got to, I don't have to block you. I don't have to beat you. I don't have to stop you in your tracks. I just have to push you two yards further up. And that's a lot easier. Um, so he kind of, it's like he, he, he plays a game. This is what I meant when I said he plays a game on hard mode a little bit sometimes. Um, but he has the ability to do that and to kind of turn that into his own advantage um, where he is making himself do that hip turn, get up field. That's a really difficult thing, just like athletically for offensive linemen to do. But he does it so consistently that again, you're like, not going to argue um, and that's why like Dara saw, if you're a young lineman and you're trying to watch guys, I would probably tell you to watch someone else because Dara saw's game is very unorthodox. I, you probably have heard people say it a lot and I, and I see it for sure. His game looks very effortless. Um, it, it almost like if you didn't know what you were looking at, it would look lazy because of how easy everything looks to him. And I think that's a product of him sort of being very conservative with his motion. And that's really smart as an offensive lineman. When you are a huge dude, be stingy with how far out of position you're going to let yourself get, right? Never let your weight get out in front of you. Don't kick slide so deep that you can get beat inside. You know, let him go up and around. And then all you got to do is push him and all that stuff. Um, all of that's strategically really, really smart. And it creates this effortless looking play. But... If you're going to do that, you have to have bazookas for arms, you know, and you have to be able to get your hips flipped and get up field really fast. And not all tackles can do that. So you like Derisaw has a very specific skill set that he does a great job of playing into. And that is what it makes him like so fun to watch is that he's it's, he's not like other boys, you know? <laughs> He's, and, and that's really fun. Um, and that sort of leads me into the greater point about kind of qualifying versus quantifying and how I want to do player evals moving forward, but especially when it comes to draft season, which I'm not into yet. And we'll probably, I don't know, February ish, maybe March ish, I'll, I'll go uh, start getting into the college players a little bit more. But when I do that, I kind of want to apply some of the lessons that I learned with there. So, so that's kind of what I, I, I just want to talk it out with you next. But first, it is playoff time, and that marks something very cool at Locked On. Uh, we have a new sports betting partner. They are the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. Uh, and if you're new to FanDuel, we got something pretty cool for you. They have a whole bunch of great new features that make betting on sports fun and easy. And 
If you are new, you can join today and get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet if you sign up at fanduel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has everything from, you know, your regular point spreads. I think it's, what, one and a half for the home team in both of these conference championship games. I think I'm taking that. Um, I'm a little bit worried about betting against Cincinnati because they're like 10 and one in their last 11 games against the spread or something like it's spread Cincinnati over there. Um, but I think I would take that. I, I, I am definitely feeling the Eagles. The Eagles just do not feel like a team with weaknesses. <laughs> like they just, I don't know. They seem completely insane and they're a chameleon and they can beat you in so many different ways that it makes it really scary. Um, the AFC championship is a lot harder for me, but I guess if I, if I had to go with somebody, I'm going with, with Mahomes. Um, but Hey, you can parlay stuff like that. You can do your player props and everything you could ever want all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets. Win or lose at fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So bear with me a little bit as I get more philosophical here. Um, when you see most of what we see, I guess, with player evals is quantitative. It's either a stat or a ranking um, and very rarely do you see, except in the draft, I think we do this a little better, do you see qualifying a player. But even when you see a qualifying a player, it's usually a bulleted list of kind of strengths and weaknesses. Like in the draft, you'll see, all right, he's good at these things, he's bad at these things. Um, or you'll just kind of see, all right, here's my grade on him, right? I think he's a second round player. Or you'll see, here's my big board where I think he's, you know, the third best tackle in the draft or something like that. But it all is sort of quantifying. It's a pro and con list. Look, he's got four positives and three negatives, right? Here's what they are. And I, and I think that's better than just saying, you know, raw, I give this dude a B plus. Um, but it is all, I think, or at least for me, it has always left something to be desired. And part of the reason that I got into doing this, you know, breaking down football as my job is because I always kind of craved something more. I always wanted to, okay, yeah, I get, I get it, right? This dude is, is, uh, cornerback one, right? Or I'm trying to think, I don't know if that who is like consensus number one at anything in the draft. I have no idea who the names are, but you know, somebody like Trevor Lawrence, quarterback one, everybody and their mother are great on it. Okay, great. I know that now I can go to my friends and I can be at the bar and I can be like, nah, Trevor Lawrence is the best QB in the draft. And that's going to be who, who everybody wants. Um, and, but then if somebody was like, oh, cool. Well, what makes him that? Why? None of those things can really help me answer it. The The bulleted list can help me some, right? You can say, oh, yeah, he's like got really good processing and he's got arm strength and blah, 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 blah. A lot of what we get, especially at the pro level, I can tell you, well, you know, Darius doesn't give up a lot of pressures. And you could kind of, but like the toddler that always asks why, how far can you get in a conversation with a toddler that always asks why? There's your litmus test for for how sound your evaluation method is, um, or at least how how in-depth it can go by my, how much I'm going to be interested in it. How about that? Um, I share opinions with a toddler. Take that to the bank. <laughs> uh, but like, okay, why is Christian Darisaw good? Every stat, every grade, every ranking is going to have him in the top five. And if they don't, it's because they didn't watch him. Bar none. If you didn't, if you don't think Christian Darisaw is a top five tackle in this league, you just haven't watched him. And that's fine. That's fair. There's a lot of tackles in the league. You don't have to pretend you watched every single one. So I can point you to PFF, to ESPN stats, to SIS, whatever you want, to say that Christian Darisaw is a top five tackle in this league. Okay, we all agree. He's a top five tackle in this league. But then if the toddler asks me why, well, what, what can you say? And that's kind of what I tried to make this show be for, for, for Darisaw. Um, and you can say, okay, well, you know, he's got heavy hands and he's, got, he's a good run blocker and... And so the answer to that can be, well, he's a good run blocker and he doesn't give up a lot of pressures, right? And then the toddler asks, why doesn't he give up a lot of pressure? And that's where you can get into some of the stuff that we talked about uh, We talked about today. And you, know, you say, well, he's got really heavy hands and he you know, has really good anchor and he doesn't, if he lets you get up and around, he's really good at getting his hips slipped and going. And then he asks, why to that? That becomes a harder question, right? It's like, well, I guess if he's got a really heavy punch, and all he's got to do is get you to go, you know, two, for, 
two more yards upfield. Yeah, it kind of makes sense that he would sort of stay home a little bit more and let you get up past him a little bit because that's an easier position for him to recover from than most tackles. So he'll kind of play into that situation where if I am going to lose, I'm going to lose in a way that's the easiest for me to fix. Um, the other thing that he does, I just forgot to bring this up, but I have to, is his jump sets are ungodly. They are like face melting. Um, a jump set is when you, it, it, it's what it sounds like, right? It's, you know, you're lined up at tackle. Say you've got a wide nine guy out there. There's a, a rep that I posted of him doing this that went kind of viral uh, to Unique Ngakwe from the Colts game. The NFL Twitter picked it up. Um, but he jump set into Ngakwe and then with his shoulders straight up over his, his feet, gave one of those nasty punches. Um, but really what was cool is that his feet, like he covered like two yards of horizontal space with his first two steps and a wide nine technique, a guy like Ngakwe, especially who wants to line up out wide and be a speed rusher and get up, get past you and then use that cross chop. That's like his move to get your hands back, right? Or to get your, keep your hands off him so that he can then dip and rip under you. Well, when Dara saw jump sets into you, you have lost all the space that you were kind of banking on to work with to set up your proper angle and your speed rush and stuff. So against faster rushers, now suddenly you're in a phone booth with Christian Dara saw. You are a dead man. Um, the thing is, guys that are that good in a phone booth typically aren't that good at, at covering space with their initial two steps, and it makes Christian Darasaw a very special player. Um, so there, that's that's your why, right? Well, he's got these strengths, and he's sort of putting himself in a situation where, okay, now I'm in a phone booth with you, right? Now this is my strength. Or sort of surprisingly for a guy of his size and stature, his strength is getting his hips flipped upfield and pushing you upfield. I'm going to play into where if the rep is going to come down to something, I want it to come down to that. Um so I want to take that sort of angle when it comes to players in the draft and in, in general, right? Instead of telling you, you know, I, my, my 2023 New Year's resolution is I don't want to give any grades or like vanilla quantifications, right? You can get those from a bajillion different sites and their methodologies are all going to be way more tested than me. I'm going off the dome here. But I will give you what this guy does and the package that you get with him. Because ultimately, and this is where the sort of pro-con list falls away for me, players are not a Madden-style set of, you know, do they have this skill, do they not have this skill, right? Like for Darisaw, I could the, the mistake I made in the 2021 draft was saying, well, I don't think he's very good at kick slides. So I said, kick slides minus, right? There's your, there's a con for it. And really it was that he was sort of purposefully not trying to get so much depth on his kick slide that he would leave himself susceptible to a counter to the inside, right? If he gets too deep, you could just kind of cut inside him. Um, and I was mistaking that for not being very good at the thing, but it was purposefully not using the thing. And so I think I needed to come to a better understanding of, okay, what is his game? What is he trying to do? And every player is going to be different. And what their game is, and maybe what it has to be, can get you, I guess, a better sense of the why. Why is this dude, you know, wide receiver four on the consensus big board? Why is this guy getting this grade, et cetera, et cetera? So that's what I want to bring to you. I hope I brought that to you with there. So I want to do that with a few other players this uh, off season as we, as you know, it's January playoffs are still going and stuff. We're still kind of post morteming the 2022 Vikings. Um, but, but if you haven't heard enough about Christian Darasaw, and here's how this is going to happen that with linemen, it lags, I think a year with a lot of these kind of unsung positions. So we haven't heard a lot about Darasaw from the national perspective. There's like one guy on Pat McAfee that goes crazy about him all the time, which good for that guy. Um, but otherwise, you know, that's not on the Sunday night football broadcasts or whatever. You're not going, oh, look at this matchup with Christian Darasaw and whoever, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's not really what we've been hearing about the Vikings, right? Like if you hear national talk about the Vikings, it never mentions Christian Darasaw, which I think is a travesty. He's a top five tackle. He's elite. And uh, next year is going to be his quote unquote breakout year. But if you were paying attention, you would see he already broke out. So uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow on the Locked On Vikings podcast. Check out Locked On NFL. And as always, skull.